Right now, we're going to look at the Real Drum Stems feature. This is a very exciting new feature, and with this release, over 50 of the Real Drums have these accompanying stems, and more will be introduced in the future. These are individual recordings of all the microphones used during the actual recording session. So whereas previously when you would load a drum style, you'd get an already mixed stereo recording of the whole kit. Now you can also get all of these individual mics, which is great for doing a proper full mix of your song. So these are, of course, not isolated tracks of just the kick, or just the snare. For example, you're still hearing the hi-hat there. But it's the mic that's miking the kick, snare, hi-hat, etc. So with each of these, you can still hear the other instruments to a certain degree, some more than others, but because it's, again, for example, the mic that's right over the snare, that allows you to raise or lower the sound of the snare within the context of the whole mix. There are also other uses for this feature besides just doing a custom mix of a single kit. For example, in some cases you might want to mix some different drum parts together, despite the fact that they're not isolated tracks. For this, you mostly just need to experiment a bit. And I mentioned that the stems are not isolated parts, but in some case they actually are. For example, if the kit was recorded and then the drummer overdubbed other percussion afterwards, those tracks would be isolated. And there are examples of this in these new drum stems as well. Right now we're listening to one of the new Songs with Vocals, The Holding On. I'll be talking about these songs with vocals a little later on in the video, but I'm going to go back in time a bit here to show you how I got all of these drum stems loaded. So I have one of our songs with vocals loaded, the holding on, and I'd like to use this to demonstrate the new real drums stems feature. So I'm going to go into the real drums picker to start with. So first of all, I'd like to have a look at the real drums that do contain stems. Now you'll notice in the real drums picker here, there's a new column labeled stems. And for a lot of these, it says zero, meaning those real drums do not have stems available. But for some of them, it has a number like this one says nine. That means there are nine stems as part of this real drum style. Now I can sort by this stems column and that will then group everything above has zero, but everything with actual numbers beside them have stems available. And it ranges from some styles with four stems all the way up to some styles with 17 stems. Now, if I look at this one up here, we can see in this area of the real drums picker, the stems are listed. We have the main mix, which is what all of the real drums have. But then we also have, for this one, kick, snare top, snare bottom, hi-hat, ride, tom floor, tom rack. So each one of these stems corresponds to a microphone that was used during the recording of that real drum style. So there was a microphone right on the kick drum. There was a microphone above the snare and one below it. There was a microphone pointed to the hi-hat. There was one above the kit pointed towards the ride, and then there were two separate mics on each of the toms, floor tom and the rack tom. Now, as I pointed out, some of the other styles have more stems. For example, all of these in this Nashville radio category here, they all appear to have 10 stems, while as this one I'm looking at right now only has seven. The reason for this is that the producer of this recording session for these real drums would use a setup that's based around the type of vibe that they're hoping to get with that kit. So often with jazz kits or, or really anything that you want to kind of sound rootsy, you don't necessarily need a lot of microphones if you really want to get a bit of a rootsy feel or a jazzy feel to it. That's why these Americana ones here had more of a stripped down setup to mic the drums. These ones, the Nashville radio ones, these are all part of the same session. And with those, the idea was to get more of a slick radio kind of sound. So if I click on one of these, Let's have a look at the mics that were then used for this recording. There was a mic on the kick. There was also an additional sub mic on that. It also has snare top and snare bottom, hi-hat, floor tom, and a mic for the rack toms. But it also had overhead mics, 
also had room mics that were further back and had another option for room mics, a bullet mic, which is a specific microphone design. So this one then has lots of options to blend together for the final mix. Now, another reason why there might be a higher number for the number of stems is that the stems also include any percussion instruments that were overdubbed after the initial drum kit was recorded. So for example, here, this particular style has a drum kit and we can see all the mics for those. It also had bongos added afterwards, cajon, an additional mic on the cajon, and palmas, which is basically hand claps. Now with the microphones that were used to record the kit, these are of course not isolated. Like you don't just hear a particular tom with this mic. You'll still hear the other instruments around, but the microphone is focused in on that particular instrument. So it's useful for mixing and balancing, but you will still hear the other instruments in each of the mics to varying degrees. But in these instances where we've added percussion after the fact, those stems will actually be isolated. So for example, the bongo here could be used individually with different real drums and it would be completely isolated. So you'd be able to use that in any other setting that you like. Same with the cajon and the hand clap palmas. Now I'd like to find a real drum style that will work for this song that I had here loaded already, the holding on. Now that song is intended to very much be kind of a radio friendly country song. So if I scroll back up, these Nashville radio drum kits would likely be appropriate for this. And since this style is a swing 16th style, you can see that right up here listed the groove and the, the groove and the time signature, swing 16 at 4-4, and it's 90 beats per minute. This one here is a swing 16th style and it works well over a tempo range of 70 to 120 beats per minute. So that actually would be perfect for this one, which is right in the middle of that range. Now you can pick individual stems or just the mix, or you can just select this and that puts a check mark beside everything. So that's what I'll do here. So now you can see all of these stems listed here in the mixer. And it's already given you a fairly good starting point for an actual mix as well. Now you can mix it however you like, you can make any changes you like, but it gives you a little bit of a head start with a specific mix here. Now the idea of course is not to use these with the main stereo mix that we had previously. It's still useful to have this, uh, I find anyway, basically as a reference point. But for the purposes right now, I'm going to mute the mix so that we're just hearing the stems along with this song. So I'll just press play now and see how it's sounding with this mix that it's given us. So as I mentioned before, these are not isolated parts. So this is definitely the kick mic and you can hear that it's, it's very much, the kick is what's prominent here, but you can still hear the snare in behind. That's because the microphones aren't, don't exclude everything around them. It's still gonna pick that up. But that's not the idea with these, uh, is that you get an isolated sound. The idea is that you can blend and balance them. And you can also at this point start adding plugins. And that's one of the great things about the drum stems as well, is if you have your main mix, you don't necessarily want to want to apply a plugin effects or EQ or anything like that to the entire thing. You want to apply effects to certain elements of it. At least that makes it way easier to, to have full control. So for example, with this one, I could add a plugin on the kick. I could add a graphic EQ and um, I'll, I'll just play just this main kick here. And now if I wanted to kind of make it a little bit punchier, 60 hertz here, 
Well, here, let me, I'll turn it way up. So here, let me take that out again. And then I'll put it back in. Another thing is reverb. Um, and actually this is, yeah, I'm going to stop this here right now. And specifically talking about reverb, let me just solo the original mix again. Now it has some reverb applied, but if we add more, that reverb of course is applied to the entire mix. So if you apply too much reverb, you start to get kind of a washed out sound if it's applied to the entire mix. But let me just bring in a couple elements of this, maybe the, the kicks and the snare top and the snare bottom here. So let me just play a little bit of this. Now I'm just going to apply some reverb just to this, the top snare mic. Now, if this was the whole mix, applying reverb would also apply it to the kick. So listen, listen again here. So maybe a little reverb on the kick might be nice, but you definitely don't want the same amount applied to the kick as you do to the snare or other instruments. Anyway, this, this, again, the whole point of having the drum stems is to be able to isolate and apply the effects and the EQ that you want for the individual mics. And it's the holding on that gets us through it all. Holding on to that final curtain call. All right, I'm going to do another drum stems example. And in this case, I'm going to show you a use for just selecting a few of the drum stems rather than the full list. So right now I have a real drum style loaded here that does have stems available. So I'm going to go into the real drums picker again and take a look at these. So again, here is the full list of all of the stems available for this. But rather than pick all stems, I will pick the mix and I'm actually going to use the mix in this case. But I'm also going to pick kick out, snare top, and snare bottom. Now the reason is that for the kick, one reason for picking just a few stems is to just give one of the specific drums in the mix an extra boost. So this kick can be used for that. And then another reason is, as I, as I showed you in the previous video, having uh, reverb or other effects just on specific stems is useful and you can actually do that effects for certain instruments into the main mix so that's what i'll use the snare ones for here so i'll select ok and now you can see that just those three stems have been loaded on here now before i start this i also want to show you this icon here that's a new icon indicating that these are drum stems and one significance of this icon is to indicate that the part that's generated for this is the same as the part generated for the parent track. Now that's very important because while the kick, for example, may play a particular repeating pattern, it's not going to be playing exactly the same pattern throughout. So if this kick part was just a completely separate generation of the real drum, it might not exactly match the mix. But these icons indicate that they're all stems from a parent real drum, meaning that the generation that's created here will be exactly the same as this. And because of that, using this stem blended in with this mix is perfectly fine to do since it's exactly the same part, just only one mic instead of the full mix. 
So I'm going to generate and play now. So now we can hear the full mix of the drums, and I'll actually solo that. So now I'm going to also solo just the kick. So we have a full mix there, but we're also, this can be treated as just a booster of the kick drum. I'll turn it way up here. So that's too much, but it just gives the whole thing an extra boost. So now for the snare, I'm going to do something different. For the snare, I'm going to turn the reverb way up on this. So that's way more than I would want for this. But now, even because there's actually a snare in the, in the main mix, I can just treat these as reverb tracks, basically. So the louder I turn the track itself, the more reverb gets blended into that mix. But it's reverb that's only applied to this particular snare and not applied to the full mix, which is what I want. I'm going to do one more drum stems example. As I mentioned before, some of the real drums that now have stems added include percussion that was overdubbed after the kit was recorded. And those therefore are completely isolated tracks in that you don't hear, even faintly, any of the other drum elements. For this reason, they're tailor-made for picking and using on their own. I also mentioned that you can also take stems from the main kit and mix and match those with other drums. Because of the microphone bleed I mentioned previously, this is more of a trial and error process, but I certainly have done that myself and sometimes it's surprisingly good. So I have another one of our songs with vocals, Artist Performances Loaded, You're Moving On. And this one has electronic drums throughout, synth bass and synth pad, and then two guitars that come in at the C and D sections of the song. So I definitely want to add some percussion to this. I always like the combination of electronic instruments with acoustic instruments, so electronic drums with some real percussion will be great, and I'll even try adding a few stems from a kit as well and see how that goes. So unlike the previous examples, in this case I don't want to remove the drums that are already there. I want to just leave those entirely alone and add some new ones. So right now my view is showing only active tracks. So I'm going to go down here and I'm just going to show all tracks right now. So I'll add some drums to Utility Track 6. So the last time I was in this dialog, I sorted it by stems and I'll leave it like that now so that if I scroll to the bottom, it's like before going to show me all of the real drums that have stems and it shows me in this column how many stems there are in each one. And again, I'm going to look to the groove, time signature, and tempo of the existing song in this area. Even eighths, 4-4, four, four, and 122 beats per minute. Even eighths and even sixteenths are more or less interchangeable. So I'll just look for any even style that's 4-4, four, four, where 122 fits within the range. So for example, these ones would be too fast because the low end of the range is 180 beats per minute, so that's definitely too fast. This one actually would, uh, 100 to 125, so 122 is within that. I could just double click on here to sample and see what this drum style sounds like. Not really what I had in mind. Um, in fact, I'm not entirely sure what I have in mind. I just want to experiment with a few. Um, this rootsy funk one. Yeah, that's also that's also good. There's a merengue one here. It fits within that tempo range. 
But I also actually just noticed there's also a merengue that has the word perk at the end of it, meaning there's percussion added to that one as well. So let me check that one out. So that was the same demo we were hearing before, but it has some additional percussion added, some Congo and some Guero. But actually, right now, I think I'm just gonna try the some drum elements. That one has a pretty cool tom pattern. Yeah, it plays a really cool tom pattern kind of near the end of every bar. And that, I don't know if that would necessarily work with this one, but I'd like to try. So yeah, I think I'm going to try that one. So I'm not going to select all of the stems right now. Uh, I will just select the five different tom mics here and see how that is. Maybe I'll add the kick as well. See how the kick sounds in the blend there too. So yeah, that's all I'll do. So I'll now press OK. And we can see that those have been added here. Now again, unlike the previous demos I did, these now aren't based off of the main drum track. So you can see that toms one through five have this icon, but the kick here does not have that icon. That means this kick track is kind of the parent of these. And then these tom tracks essentially duplicate the part that's created by the kick here so that they'll still all match up. So I'm going to just play this right now and while it's playing I'll probably solo some of these and see how they're sounding and yeah see how it how it fits in. Okay, so with this particular demo, the actual drum track is muted intentionally for the first eight bars. So we were only actually hearing the toms for those first eight bars, and then the electronic drums came in at bar nine. Uh, this was all set in the bar settings dialog. So that was actually kind of cool. Then we were just hearing these acoustic drums for the first eight bars, and then we hear the electronic drums come in at bar nine. So I actually kind of like that. And I thought they were sounding pretty neat in that. I'll also mention too that in, in the previous demos, I told you that when you load the stems, they kind of come pre-mixed with a good starting point. And that's the case with these as well. In particular, toms are often panned when you have different mics on the different toms, you have them go left to right. And so you can see the panning here, left to right for these toms, basically, the way they're laid out on the drum kit, uh, which is great. Reverb has not been added. Um, there is probably reverb in the in some of the other stems if I had picked the whole kit. So I'm going to add some reverb as well, but I'll just start playback again from bar nine here. I guess I... Now I'm just removing some of the highs to get out some of the other what we're hearing and so we're now more only hearing 
the kick itself in this. So I did the same thing I did before to make it a little punchier. I brought up around 60 hertz. Um, uh, but then I also managed to get some of the other sounds of those instruments out by removing some of the high end there. So now we really hear the electronic element mixing in with these toms. So that's pretty cool. I, I quite like the way that worked out. And I'm thinking maybe I'll now add some more. Uh, maybe I will add some percussion. And it doesn't even have to be the percussion from this drum kit. I can try out some others and see if there's something else I might like. So again, I have my mixer here set to, as soon as I press play, it only shows me active tracks. But just so that I can select another one of those, I will go in and show them all again, just so I see what I have left here. And on utility 12, I will add another real drum style here. Now again, I'm gonna scroll to the bottom so we have all of the real drums with stems grouped together. And now I'm particularly gonna be looking at ones that have the word perk in them, because that means it's, it's a drum kit with percussion added. And I'm going to look up in some of these uh, funky ones here. See if there's something in here. I'll double click again to sample this. Now this one actually doesn't fit in to the tempo range for ours, but actually this one does. Let me try this one out here. So yeah, that one might be kind of cool. And it looks like it has three percussion instruments. Anklung, which is an Indonesian percussion instrument. Kashishi uh, is a kind of shaker. And then it also has conga. So I'll add all three of those. There you go. So they're added now. And just like before, the first of the group doesn't have that stems icon because that's considered to be the parent one. And then these ones underneath it do have that stems indicating that the part that is generated is based on the same part that is generated here, just with the different instruments. All right, so I'll now play this and try mixing them together and see how that sounds. So yeah, that was some fun little experimenting there, and I'm quite happy with the results. Those That tom group is really neat, and I love these new percussion uh, instruments that were added. So you can see there are lots of great new possibilities with these drum stems.